Hello and welcome to week three of 212 Live. Man, we are so excited. I mean, this show is going to be lit. It's going to be fire. It's going to be absolutely. You have to stop. I, but I'm I really know you're excited. excited. I know you're excited. That's but cool kids. just like it's going to be. Know your place. I, I'm know the one who has a degree of working with students. I think I know what they want to hear. You don't have a degree okay. in cool, though. Okay, whatever. All right. <laughs> hey, you know what? We're just going to jump right into it. Gabby, have you heard of this terrible thing, terrible thing called the Quarantine 15? Yes, and I have also been a freshman in college, so I do understand the concept of the freshman 15, too. So I have now survived, too. God gives his hardest battles to his toughest soldiers. I, I think, I don't know if that's <laughs> okay. Well, you know, if you're anything like me, you've been doing a whole lot of eating, but not a whole lot of working out. Actually, like, I've been doing great with running, and then right before the quarantine happened, I, I got hurt. And so I'm just uh. sitting at home. Watching. And <laughs> Watching eating. and eating. And eating and well, the eating. good news is, is we have our very own consistent loser, Shayla Long. She put together a little video. <laughs> she put together a little video for us to show us how to be physically active during the quarantine. All right, hey, go ahead and roll that, and let's work off Hi that guys, 15. Hi I'm Shayla, and welcome to Coach's Corner. I'm going to give you some at-home workouts that you can do in the comfort of your own home. First thing you need to do today is grab your unsuspecting pet. This is Bella. She's plump. <coughs> Bella needs to work out as well. So what I'm going to do with Bella today is bicep curls. Make sure I get a good base on her right here. I'm going to use her as my weight to just curl. Two. Three. Four. I would suggest getting three sets of ten using your fat cat. exercise. With Masha, I'm going to do some squats, and while I do that, I'm going to press as I squat. Make sure you keep your quads engaged, squeeze your glutes as you're doing these. Three sets of ten of those as well. I'm going to use Masha to do an arm workout too. I'm really going to focus on my obliques here. So with two hands, because I don't think she'll let me do anything else, I'm going to hold Masha up, and I'm going to bring my elbow to my knees. Really work on squeezing my obliques as I do this. Don't let her fool you. She's purring. She likes it. So here you go. Workout number one from Coach's Corner. Wear your makeup. Matches your outfit. And cats are your best friend. Until next time. Stay strong. <laughs> you know, I was totally in until the whole cats are your best friend. I mean, cats, not a cat guy. Dogs, I'm in. Totally I like in for both, the dogs. but I, I, no. I'm a bird person now, now that I have my bird. Wait, did back that up. A bird. Yeah. You don't have a bird. I have a bird. She's so pretty. Caleb, show the bird picture. Oh, my gosh. No. This is. Oh, isn't she so cute? You actually have a bird. I have a bird, yeah. And what's the bird's name? Penny. Penny. Uh huh. Because you have no sense, and so you need a sense. Like, <laughs> That's so grief. rude. Birds are a terrible idea. You're terrible. bullying me almost Can't as hard as I bully Shayla. You could eat a bird. No Stop. one would like. Someone would frown at me if I ate my dog, but no one would frown at me if I ate your bird. It would be a little weird. It, 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 it Maybe <laughs> a little. Hey, that doesn't matter. Okay, we're we're getting off track once again. Thanks to Gabby. Uh, hey, last week we talked uh, about the video challenge was prank videos, and we had some good ones. Uh, three specifically: Colby Troxel, Simon Shilato, Brayton Watts. You three guys. Absolutely got it. Mm -hmm. We're going to be premiering those on our Instagram story. Gabby's going to be doing that for us this week. Yep. Man, they were funny. But you know what I really learned? What? Don't trust your brothers. Oh, absolutely. I have four brothers. I don't trust a single one of them. I, I have two brothers, and they don't trust me. <laughs> That's fair. That's just on having an IQ. Uh, oh, I love wow. it. Okay. Well, hey, this week's <laughs> challenge, and remember, if you do the, send the challenge in to the number, you get five entries Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in for, for the, uh, the giveaway. You know what this week's giveaway is? What? One gallon of ice cream. I thought we were trying to avoid the quarantine 15. I mean, sure. I mean, just run and eat ice cream at the same time. <laughs> I mean, there's no way that's going to go bad. I mean, look at this. One gallon. And it's, it's going to be great. You don't have to share this at all. Yeah. Like, in my house, I eat all the ice cream. And honestly, the ice with cream. the video so. that Shayla did for us, you could totally do that and eat the ice cream and it cancels out. It 
Negative. And she's a math teacher, so she knows. <laughs> she understands the numbers. <laughs> she understands the numbers. I love it. But what are we doing for this week's challenge? This week's challenge is all about TikTok videos. I yes. know you're all over TikTok. I love TikTok. I have an account. Gabby, do you have an account? I have an account, but I don't post anything. Then why do you have an account? To watch stuff. To, to watch. run up my screen time. <laughs> uh, I have an account. Uh, uh, Jake's the youth pastor. You should check it out. Um, I'm probably more famous than all of you. I mean, we're just going to put that out there. No. But no. Uh, it's absolutely worth going to, to, to follow. Follow That's my account. That's true. But we want you guys to be showing us your favorite TikTok. No, you need to be in the video. Yeah, you be in the video. Be in, uh, do a TikTok video and send it to us. We have an example right here done to for some of the students that we have. Yeah. So go ahead and watch the video. <laughs> I love it. You know, oh people, my goodness. People say that I'm a great dancer. I mean, it's just it's people. I mean, they're liars, but Don't literally who says that? Oh, two people. My mom and my wife. So I would hate to call your mom and your wife a liar, but if I didn't, that would make me a liar. So Uh well, I'm probably better than Josie at least. She looks really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> so that's just cuz there's no music. Oh you can't man. blame her. We love you, Josie. We uh, that do. was a great video. Thank you guys so much. Hey, that's just one way. And you get your name in five times for the giveaway if yeah. you send us a video. Two 913-534-4446 or the email here listed below, guys. Mm -hmm. Send those in. But also, there's a, a ton of other ways to get into the drawing. Gabby, tell yeah. me about the other ways. Yeah, absolutely. So doing the challenge, sending us a video, that's five, right? Um, and like we said last week, share us on your Instagram stories. You don't have to do anything that pertains to 212. You can just show us what you've been doing during quarantine, whether it's new music you've been finding, a puzzle you finished, what you've been doing to uh, stay fit. If you uh, participate in Coach's Corner. Or food. Yes. Food. I, I like food. to see the food. Molly yes. Umfenauer. Shout out to you, girl. Mm -hmm. She made the best looking like cheese stuffed yeah. covered noodles. That Molly, after quarantine, I'm going to your house for dinner. I hope you're can ready. You, can you... Can they send that? Does Amazon prime other people's dinners? I don't think Amazon is fully in charge of just the postal <laughs> system. I think you can just do it on your own. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, anyway. Well. So anyway. There's anyway. another way. The code the phrase. Yeah. The code phrase. The if code phrase, if you DM that on Instagram, that's one. But also don't forget, if you comment it on the live, that's two. So there's still so many ways. And, um, Tell them what the code phrase is. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. It's <laughs> Jake came up with this one. It's um, It's wabbits. Wabbits, like Elmer Fudd. You get it? <laughs> like it's, it's Easter time, not rabbits. Wabbits with a W. So absolutely be commenting that. Um, <laughs> Comment it, send it to us to get those entries in for that tub of ice cream. Wait, no, the tub of ice cream this week. We don't know what the prize is next week, but do it. But it's got to be bigger than a tub of ice cream. Yeah, uh, it's going to be great. two gallons of ice cream. <laughs> I don't know. So we're going to see. Hey, but honestly, the next video might be the best video we've shown uh -huh. since we started the live. Mm -hmm. uh, and that even with Sean and I's pickup lines. It beats that. Oh. And that was a pretty good video. You know, um, I guess it wasn't a video. <laughs> but, hey, you know who my favorite people at 212 are? Well, now that I'm not there, I can't imagine who. Well, I mean, some would think the students. And I do love all of our students. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been great. But i got to say the small group leaders. Shout that's out to the small yeah, group leaders. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, absolutely clutch. I mean, they come in, even though they've been working all day, they love their students. I mean, mm -hmm. it's an awesome, awesome opportunity yeah. for them just to love on them. And who, wait, who was your small group leader? When Kim Johanning. Kim Johanning, I love you so much. After quarantine, I'm going to give you a big hug. I have a lot of plans after quarantine. <laughs> a lot of hugging, apparently. A lot of hugging. So. Kim Johanning, you're a real one. I love you. I miss you. I hope you're watching. Okay. Uh, well, I got together with one of our small group leaders that started this year, Dylan Roberts. You guys may know him as D-Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, had an awesome opportunity to have an interview over Zoom with him about his faith. So let's go ahead and check that out. So what do you think your favorite thing about being a Christian is? Um, yeah, I, I would definitely say my favorite thing about being a Christian would be, you know, that you're not doing anything alone like you you know you may be you may get in arguments with your friends or you may get in a, you know in, in difficult situations that you feel like you can't handle stuff like that but you know when you're when you're when you're truly faithful to god and you have that good relationship with god you're never doing anything alone you know what i mean you, you've always got somebody to go to you've always got somebody that's going to help you out the other thing you know is you have genuine friendships with other christians you know, uh, it's 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 awesome to me to be able to have these Christian friends that I can go to, and without judgment or thinking they're going to go tell somebody this or that, you can you can really rely on them for help. How do you balance like normal life, family, work, things like that, being a dad with being a Christian? Balance with a crazy life. I think it's 
life is busier for everybody now than it's ever been mm-hmm. with all the media and all that. So I think, I think it's, it's really, it really easy to just, oh man, you know, I didn't get my Bible study today, but I'll get it tomorrow. But I, for me, it's super important. I found this real quick that you have to have some sort of quiet time with God every single day. If I don't have that time in the morning, I can, I can just tell a huge difference. And, you know, it's like you, you've preached to them before, um, about filling your cup. You've got to, you got to have something to fill your cup daily, weekly, stuff like that. I don't, I mean, it could be different for me when I first started, like really getting back into things in my faith, you know, a lot of, a lot of my stuff is like devotionals, just opening the Bible and reading random passages didn't do me much good, but I, I, you know, but I, I follow devotional and then I did kind of teach me how to do things and, and read the Bible a little more intently. Some people may just be like worship music that gets you going too. But I think finding that fill in your cup, you know, like you've said a million times before and stress, you've got to do that. You've got to be disciplined, you know, with kids today, with, with everyone, it's, it's easy to spend, even me, you know, it's easy to spend a lot of pointless time on Facebook scrolling or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever. But I think, if you go and you look at the little time that you spend, there's that little app on there that shows you that you spent this much time on Facebook or something. Go look at that. When you tell yourself, you know, I didn't do my Bible study today, go look at that and say, okay, I spent two hours on Instagram. I spent a half hour on Snapchat, this on Facebook, but you couldn't find five minutes to fill your cup for your, you know, to, to keep your face strong and keep you grounded. Uh, just puts it in perspective. So why, why do you think church is important, maybe for you and your family? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so many times, and I would lie if I said I didn't say this too at, at some point. You know, you hear everybody, well, you don't have to have, you know, it's your personal relationship with God, and you don't have to have church. You don't have to go to a building to, I mean, it's like a broken record, dude. Like, you hear everybody. It seems like everybody said that, that doesn't want to go to church. And... It is your personal relationship with God. I can't stress that more than anything, but you want to be successful in life. What do they say to do? What's everybody say to do? Hang out with successful people, right? Mm-hmm. Hang out with successful people. Uh, you want to be a good athlete. You want to be good at basketball. You're going to watch your favorite NBA player. You're going to do everything they do. You, you know, you're going to surround yourself with athletes and good athletes and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I see church, you know? Uh, it's different when you're a dad too and you want your kids in there. But like, for me, it's like, I love being around, especially now more than ever with everything's going on. <laughs> Obviously yeah. you're like, Oh, I just want to go to church. But, but, uh, I love being around other Christian people. For me, it's just a fellowship of other Christians and, and things like that. And, you know, whether you get something from the message or not, you're around those people that, that, ha- that think like you, you know, you want to be successful, you're around successful people. I want to be a great, the best Christian and the best dad I can be. There's tons of guys in that church right now that are, uh, you know, dads to children my age or, ha- or dads to children my age that I can, that they don't know that I'm watching. You know what I mean? I get to see them interact with kids. I get to see them do this or that. And I just think it's really cool to um, be able to get together every week for that. And, and, and that, that helps me fill my cup too, honestly. We're talking to a bunch of teenagers, typically we're on the 212 Live and you've worked with teenagers, coaching, you now deal with a eighth grade small group. You can shout out to those guys too. Um, if you could tell teenage Dylan anything uh specifically about your faith uh what what would it be you don't you don't have to do everything that everybody else is doing but you know there's it's easy in my teenage years it's easy to just fall into what everybody else is doing and i mean it's because you don't you care what everybody else thinks and you don't want to be the oddball out and all that and you know it, it seems really important then but you know one thing I started asking myself that really helped, I don't know where I heard it, but it's, will this matter in five years? Will this matter in two years? Will I remember this conversation or this post or this in this amount of time? And it's like, will this really affect, you know, and all this nonsense, all this Instagram post, all the Snapchats or the petty little conversations or this and that, a lot of that stuff won't matter. But if I could go back and start growing my faith like I started a year ago, doing what I'm doing imagine the level I could be if I could only go back and do that but I can't so it's good I started when I did but it's like if I could only go back and and just just start doing what I'm doing now 
back uh, 10 years ago, you know, just the level I could be at now and all the hardships I could have had somebody to rely on, somebody mm-hmm. to go to and not feel alone in something. You know, when you have problems, you you can pray or you can do this and that. And it just, it would have made my life 10 times easier, I think. But uh, You want to yeah, shout out to those eighth grade boys? Those who? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just hang in there uh, and just uh, contact me if you guys want. I don't have the Instagram uh, on my computer box, but I do have Facebook. <laughs> I do have Facebook. You can contact me on there or whatever. Uh, miss you guys. Can't wait to get back together. And uh, honestly, the, the biggest thing I want to say is, you know, a bored, a bored teenager can be very dangerous. So um, stay busy. And, and realize that you can be in control of your thoughts. So when that thought comes into mind, message a leader, message me, you know, pray to God, open your Bible, stop that thought before it penetrates any further. So just really try to pray a lot and control your thoughts. Don't be too bored. Absolute truth. Absolutely. Absolute 100%. truth. 100%. And that's all the way through life, too. Like, community, it's not like, oh, I'm in high school, I need community. And then, like, no, he was making points all through your Christian walk. You need that community. And I love when he said, hey, a bored teenager is a dangerous teenager. Absolutely. I mean, like, yeah. we're joking about things you can be doing, but absolutely, like, fill your day with stuff that's mm-hmm. productive. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're glad you joined us here, guys. Hey, in, in the chat, I see you guys are tearing it up in the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw uh, some text messages, too. We saw Kim. Kim said she can't wait for your hug. So, so excited, uh, Shout Kim. out to you guys. <laughs> hey, Comment below your small group leaders. Show them some love, guys. I am just so excited about them, and I know that they're praying for you. They love you, and they miss you, and we cannot wait to get back to normalcy here with 212. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are moving on to our game, which, game honestly, time. it's time. Shayla, it's your time to shine. We have Shayla and Shauna here with us, and I don't know. I feel like Shayla's going to get pretty lucky. I mean, she's been 0 for 2 for the last two weeks at 212 Live, uh, and Shauna's just a winner. I mean, through and through is a winner. Consistency on both sides. You love to see it. But I want to see if maybe the pot's going to get a little stirred today. What game are we playing today, It's Jake? called Egg Roulette. Mm-hmm. And here's how it works. I have basically taken a carton of eggs, a dozen mm-hmm. eggs, boiled nine of them, and left three raw. This is one of my favorite games. I remember doing it in youth group whenever I was in youth group. Well, I didn't have to do it. Who did it? It we might have it. been. I feel like it was Dawson Baldwin. It, it was Dawson Baldwin because it didn't it take him like the whole entire carton he to actually find an egg? <laughs> every boiled egg before he got to the, the raw eggs. It and was fantastic. I asked Tamla Snyder, our resident math teacher, um, mm-hmm. I guess Shayla is too, but Tamla, uh, she was, I was like, hey, what's the probability of that? She was like, a lot. <laughs> like, so. like, there's no way that's supposed to happen. But we do have Shayla and Shauna here. A couple to rules. Play. I need to, a couple uh-huh. rules. First, ladies, uh, if you touch the egg, you have to pick up the egg. Mm-hmm. And second, the first person to find the two raw eggs uh, out, two of out of three, three is the loser. So we're going to let Shayla go first. She needs a little luck here. Yeah. So, Shayla, go ahead and pick your egg. And no hesitation, dude. Just just slow. Go hard. All right, is let's it? see here. Oh, she, she picked a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to see here. Oh, oh that dot, looks like it hurts. Just a bullet. <laughs> Wait, all right, Shauna is going to make We were going to mic these guys, but we decided that we liked our mics more. Yeah, so we just love the sound of our own voice. Shauna, okay. go ahead and pick an egg. Why haven't you? <laughs> don't stall. Get in there, winner. All right, I don't know. Oh, Ooh, okay. She survived. Okay. She survived. Uh, I'm loving it. Here we go. I'm getting some text with some live commenting. All right, come on, Shayla. Oh, oh okay. I feel like you could be there a little now more only committed. S- there's <laughs> six boiled eggs left. Who's going to get the first raw one? Oh, no, no, just. Oh, oh <laughs> that looks so painful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's see if Shayla, Shayla, we're first starting to get egg? down low, Here it honey. goes. This is going to be raw. Absolutely going to be raw. <laughs> I know Slam it. Slam it. Slam it, sister. Why didn't you bang it? In? Shayla? Oh. <laughs> Well, hit it harder. <laughs> hit it harder. We're getting low. This is gonna, this is where the good stuff starts happening. This is it. It's all on this chance. Is it. I now. love her, but oh, oh my gosh, how many is that? <laughs> how many have you both done? How? Six. <laughs> okay, fifty-fifty chance here now that you're gonna get the raw egg, Shayla. Come on. At, at this point. I'm rooting for. Why don't you hit it? Hit, hit it, it like you mean hit it. Hit it, Shayla. Sean, I, I have a feeling this is gonna be raw, sweetheart. Should be what four eggs left. Once we get down to it, it's gonna. Oh! <laughs> oh! Shauna got the first one. 
Oh, this man. This may be Shayla's week. Man. <laughs> I need some commitment. Don't be a Shayla, chicken, Shayla. Get Don't in there. What? What? Is it over? Is it all over? Has has the rain stopped for oh, Shauna? Oh, no. We're Are we about breaking the out. streak? We're about Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I need some commitment hey, from you, Hey, go to the top of your head. Top of your head, Shayla. Top of your head. Top of your head. Commitment. All in. All in. All in. Break it. Hit it Break harder, it. Shayla. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> How many eggs are left, ladies? One. Oh. So then it's just, I Shana, mean. you got to do it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> We broke the streak. Shayla, honey, you won. This game is no yoke. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> So, uh, all right. Oh, my goodness. That was beautiful, ladies. Thank you so much. That was, that was, that was good. Uh, that was egg-tastic. I'm just absolutely. Okay, no, uh, stop. They <laughs> weren't chickens about it. Stop. I mean, there was no foul play involved. Quit, Jacob. <laughs> phenomenal. I'm just really excited for Shayla getting that win. And on a game of chance, too. Yeah, it means there's no skill, which <laughs> is her, uh, right up her alley. We so. really need to stop. She's not going to come back and play oh, games Oh, they're dropping us. the eggs. <laughs> they're still dropping the eggs. Okay. I think we have a little bumper video, and then we're going to see what's next. <laughs> Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? All right, man. Hey, it's the time of the show, guys, where we go find truth, and truth is in the Bible. And so uh, if you've got your Bible, we're going to be in the book of John and the book of Luke. But first, I want to talk to you about maybe the loneliest experience of my life, right? Uh, now, there are a lot of big transitions in your life, but one of the biggest transitions for you is going to be moving to college. And so for me, moving to college was a big deal. Man, I was so excited to go to Oklahoma Baptist University. I, I knew I wanted to be a youth pastor. I knew I wanted to study the Bible. I knew I wanted that community. A and they're honestly great at it. And so OBU does this kind of crazy thing uh, when you show up on campus, right? And so you show up on campus with all the things that you could fit in your car to put in your dorm room. And as you pull around to your dorm, there is a mob of students, OBU students waiting for you, cheering your name, chanting all the OBU stuff and getting excited you start shaking your car and then they start like unloading your bags and they take all of it to your dorm room and it's like done in no time at all and then from there you just get jumped into orientations you get jumped into tours and you get jumped into meeting other students and they work really really hard to keep you so busy that you don't really recognize the loneliness and if you know me at all you know that I'm an extrovert uh, and just a little uh, PSA here, you know, public service announcement. Uh, you should really check on your extrovert friends during the isolation. They're not doing okay, uh, right? Uh, but that just means, like, people energize me. I want to be around people. I want to be in those relationships. And so there came a point of that day that really brought me to a low spot. And it was at night. After all of the things, all the fun things had stopped, and I had to go back to my dorm room, I shut off the light. I laid down in this just old twin bed, and I just laid there and realized everything's changing. Everything's going to be different. I was laying in a new bed, in a new room, in a new town, not knowing anybody. And the loneliness was weighing really heavy. And, and the silence in the room that night w was honestly deafening. To, I mean, it, all these different feelings were just absolutely pouring on me. And you know what? I think at some point, we have all felt this feeling right here. The feeling of being alone. You see, may maybe for you is when your, your family moved, or you moved to a new school, or maybe your, your friend group split up, or, or maybe it was a breakup, or maybe it was a question or a doubt that you had that you felt like you couldn't bring to anyone because no one would really understand. You see, I think we all know what it's like to feel alone. And when we feel alone, we tend to feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by our situation and by our feelings, overwhelmed by our pain, our confusion, our circumstances. But here's the crazy thing about that alone feeling. God created us that way. Now, now, God, I'm not saying that God wanted us to feel confused and anxious and all those things, but I'm saying that he created us to not be alone, to be in close relationships. And so you've got to ask this question, okay, so when I feel those ways, when I feel alone, like maybe you are right now during all this isolation, and, and you lost the rest of your school year, and you're not being able to talk to your friends, and you realize, man, some of that, 
that human contact was so important to your day, more important than you, thought, you ever thought it was. And you're feeling alone. You're feeling isolated. You're feeling confused. Like, like what do we do when we're alone? When the loneliness and the aloneness is so unavoidable. Well, believe it or not, as we're talking about Easter, what happened during the first Easter and the days following is a game changer when we talk about being lonely, when we talk about being alone. See, we're talking about this idea of being overwhelmed, and the very first Easter, Jesus' closest friends and followers were feeling alone and overwhelmed, right? Think about these people. They had left everything to follow Jesus, some of them for years. Some of them left jobs, uh, steady finances. They left the safety, left their family members. They left to follow Jesus, and rightfully so, because he was the Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. He is who he claimed to be. I mean, they got to see miracles. They got to see people healed. They got to see the gospel and the kingdom of God totally start changing the world around them. But then something terrible happened. Then Jesus died and left them alone. And it was weird because Jesus said this was going to happen, but this didn't change the way that they felt. And just like that, everything changed for his followers, for his disciples. Jesus died, and some of the followers, some of the disciples, they stuck around together. But all of them ran and hid because they were scared that they were going to be put to death in the same brutal way that Jesus was. They had no idea what to do. And I think this is how we get to sometimes, students. When we feel alone and overwhelmed, we get stuck, and we have no idea what to do. You see, the Easter story, we know it. We, knew, we know the end of the story, but the disciples, the followers of Jesus who were hiding, they didn't really know the end. They didn't fully comprehend what was about to happen. So imagine their relief. Imagine the elation. Imagine the joy that they felt when Jesus walked back in the room. Imagine how great that was until he left again, right? Because Jesus left again. But his followers reacted in a totally different way. We know this because of the books of the New Testament, right? A guy named Luke, who was a doctor, wrote the story down. And also a guy named John, who recorded the things Jesus said and did. Like, we see the story. So, hey, grab your Bibles. Remember, the Bible is where we find truth. And go to John 16, verse 7. We're going to read the first part of verse 7. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. Jesus is saying it is to your advantage. To your advantage, because then look at the rest of it. It says, the advocate will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus said that he would leave, and this guy, the advocate would come. What is this advocate? This advocate, this word you could put in helper, comforter, defender. Really what Jesus is talking about here is the Holy Spirit. He's saying, hey, I have to leave because you need the Holy Spirit. See, the Spirit of Jesus is among us, even though he isn't physically here He's here with the Holy Spirit. See, this is great news because now the power and spirit of Jesus is everywhere. Now flip just a few pages over to the book of Acts. And the first chapter, and we get to kind of peek in to some of the last things Jesus would say to his disciples, right? Because Jesus left a second time. After he resurrected, after the grave was empty, he spent some time with his disciples. And he taught them new things, and he mended broken relationships, and he did a lot of really cool things. But then it said he ascended back into heaven. And so we get to see the last thing Jesus was going to say. In verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. See, all, of all the things Jesus could have said here, I mean, imagine yourself leaving the people you love the most. What would be the last thing you would tell them? I, mean, I love you. I mean, like, you do these things. Like, 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 what would Jesus say? And this is what he said. Hey, remember, the Holy Spirit is coming. I mean, Jesus did some crazy awesome things with the disciples. Miracles and healings, and he taught them how to live a totally different way. And this is what he reminded them of. Even though he was leaving, they wouldn't be alone. And we all know that alone feeling, don't we? And this time, the second time that Jesus left them, it was totally different. And guess what? Exactly what Jesus said is exactly what happened. See, in the days and years to come, Jesus' followers receive the power of the Holy Spirit and start telling everyone. The greatest movement in history, the Jesus movement, started right there. And now all, people all over the world know the name of Jesus, and a lot of them per, like, believe in Jesus' name as well. And so they get to, we get to have the power of the Holy Spirit. And so today we have the same power, the same Spirit that Jesus promised. If we confess and we believe, he promises it to us. 
So you see, Easter isn't just about what happened 2,000 years ago. I mean, that's important. I mean, him literally defeating death is the most important thing. It's the crux of our faith, guys. If Jesus is just a guy who preaches and then dies, we're following a crazy guy. But because Jesus defeated death, walked out of the grave, we follow the God of the universe. See, it's not just about what happened 2,000 years ago, even though that's great. It's about what Jesus does in our life today, in your life today. See, the resurrection is a reminder that all of his power and presence, that are, they're still available. They're still here for us today. And, and this really cool thing, here's our bottom line, that Easter means you're never alone. Right? Remember the, those feelings we talked about, that loneliness, that isolation? Like, Easter means, because Jesus defeated the death and he sent the Holy Spirit for us, it means we're never alone. That even when those, those feelings that are unavoidable sometimes overtake us, all we have to do is remember the promises of Jesus as he's going to send his advocate, his helper, his defender, his comforter to help us. And just like those early disciples who were confused and scared, all we need to do is remember God's promise that he sends the Holy Spirit. But I got a question for you as we kind of end this, this time of teaching. Because I, I, don't, I think we get confused sometimes. But what if you and I lived like this fact was true? What if you and I really lived like the Holy Spirit was with us, that God was with us everywhere? What would our relationships look like? What would our attitudes towards our parents look like? What, what would, you know, our activity online look like? How we give our time and our money. If we really considered this big truth that Jesus sent his helper with us and we have the same power, how would you pray? How would you worship God if we really believe this to be true? See, simply trusting the Holy Spirit would change everything around us, students. And when you're battling those feelings of anxiety and loneliness, just that idea of being alone, all we have to do is remember the promise of Jesus. If we, be if we believe in his name and confess him to be the Lord and Savior of our life, we have that power available to us as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a God of your word. That, that you died and then raised, God, that we get to celebrate Easter because of it. God, for the students and the people and the parents maybe out there just feeling alone, feeling defeated, feeling just scared, God, that they would cling to the truth that the Holy Spirit has sent to us. Cling to this fact, God, that your power is in us. God, I pray that we would be people of faith that lived like this was true. God, we love you. Help us love you more. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Guys, it's a perfect time to reach out to your small group leaders. Um, I know we were talking up on them today, and they miss you. So talk about them, or talk to talk them to about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talk to them about what you learned and what you heard from Jake. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Um, so if you guys are taking notes, go ahead and bring that to a halt, because we are going to do our ice cream giveaway. Ice cream giveaway. Here we go. All right. And, and as this goes... Uh, we also want to talk a little bit about what's happening for Easter. Gabby, did you know that the church has a once-in-a-lifetime event happening right here Sunday morning for Easter at 9 a.m.? Really? Calling it Drive-In Church, guys. We're really, really excited about this. I so love we that. can't gather in person in this room, mm -hmm. but uh, we have found that we can gather in our cars to get like a drive-in <laughs> movie. It's going to be great. I love that. Joe is going to be a radio preacher for the first time. He's I'm going to be, be waving out my window to, hey, hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm going to be so excited. So, hey, get up, get dressed in your Easter clothes, mm -hmm. show up to church, guys. It's going to be a great time, 9 a.m. Sunday morning. But, hey, I would show up a little early to get a good spot. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be pretty cool. Never before we've done this, yeah. and it's going to be a lot of fun. I have a few surprises on the way It'll too. give me a reason to do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, as this spins, though, hey, remember, uh, follow us on Instagram. Stay connected to us through the text messages. Absolutely. Okay, Our Instagram, 212 Stu Men. I think, I think they're nervous and they're anxious. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, give it let's to see we'll who see it's going to be. Simon! Simon! So. Good let, job, Simon! Let this be a lesson. He did the video. Did it? And doesn't he do the uh, Bible study every day? And the Bible too? study every day. He's put himself up in there a lot of chances. Every morning, Monday through Friday at 930, you have a chance to join us through our daily Devo through Zoom. And we play games almost every day to see who gets to put their name in. Mm -hmm. So, Simon, a gallon of ice cream to you, my sir. <laughs> and you, hey, permission from your youth pastor. You don't have to share with your, you have to share with your mom. Yeah, uh, you, moms I mean, deserve the world. Mom deserves the world. You need to share with your mom. But everyone else, you don't have to share with them, especially the brother who pranked you. <laughs> Let that I be a lesson it. to you, Lewis. I so. love it. All right, guys. Hey, that's all we have here uh, for 212 Live, where Shayla is now a winner. Uh, this is great. Yeah, We're about big that. news.
Let's go, Shayla. So we'll see what we're going to do next week. Be working out with your cats and your dogs and your birds. And your birds. And your birds. Especially your birds. And we will see you next week here at 630. Bye, guys. Bye.